a very good day learners uh, today again i am going to start the second video on the theme an empire across the three continents children this title directly suggests us about the roman empire so we had done in our last video about the social features of the roman empire we did it in detail i have explained you almost all the factors of the uh, society during the roman empire in detail secondly we discussed the economic features in economic features also we uh, covered almost all the aspects of the roman society okay children now we are moving towards the present today today's subject matter that is about the cultural features of the roman society okay so as you see this tree this tree would be suggesting you in detail about the religious features cultural features of the roman society uh see uh that roman society had adopted christianity in 4th century uh second branch of this tree suggests that there had been the complex processes regarding the social traditions customs norms etc judaism was also uh, running along diversity there had been uh, when i say diversity uh, it's obvious to you children as roman empire had been extended up to the last territory it included the plain part also it included the desert part also of saharan it included the uh, cold uh, climatic uh, european uh, territory also so there had been various people of uh, uh, diverse cultures diverse uh, faiths diverse uh, traditions and diverse social practices okay so diversity had been a remarkable feature of the roman uh, society then uh, you know there had been the natural worships also there had been the worship of uh, the gods of the roman times in which they they had been worshiping the god of love god of nature god of uh, light god of uh, love etc okay so let us see it in detail uh, it all uh, makes the theme very interesting so main cultural features of roman times have been decided have been uh, depicted have been divided in two categories number one is art and architecture uh, second age knowledge and science so we'll be studying these two in detail so as far as the first factor of the roman culture is related we are going to deal about art and architecture so in art and architecture statues colosseum uh brussels 20 buildings aqueducts and amphitheater would be the major part uh would be the major part okay clear second age uh you know when we say statues when we say about the brussels 20 buildings aqueduct aqueducts these all had been the remarkable features of the roman territory okay uh now we see the another type of factor that is knowledge and science that is really really very uh, remarkable to the roman uh, part of society roman society uh, knowledge and science as we consider there had been plurality of languages as you know uh, the roman empire had been extended up to the vast area there had been different languages people used to speak the variety of languages as we do in india okay uh, secondly they had knowledge of water milling technology in those days they had knowledge of uh, using the water power uh, and uh, using it for the irrigation and all other purposes so that show that they had been technically sound clear uh, when we say plurality of language children i want to make you realize that uh, they had knowledge of latin greek coptic language punic language aramaic language berber language etc so they show that how rich they were uh, romans were in the in their uh, languages okay secondly they had knowledge of uh, dividing the year in 12 months they had the concept of calendar they had uh, the proper law system draconian law law courts etc had been uh, etc had been devised 
as far as we uh, see the technology they had knowledge of mining they had knowledge of uh, using the hydraulic power water power to uh, uh, to run the to run or uh, to use it for some uh, mechanical purposes secondly there had been various writers whose work make us surprised that how rich they were uh, like uh, strabo pliny tacitus Olympiodinus, all these have been uh, showed that uh, they had great knowledge. They had very good knowledge of uh, the society, nature, as well as uh, the science. Okay, now children, uh, we move to the another thing, that is the cult political features of the Roman society. When we discuss the political features. we divide the roman society in two major uh, categories first is the early empire and second is the late empire or uh, when we would uh, in the late empire late antiquity we would be discussing the downfall of the roman empire as well so uh, first we go to the early empire children uh, when i say early empire i'll be considering the time duration of first to third century okay clear the time of to first to third century would be considered as the early roman empire now see there had been the three uh, categories in the uh, three powerful categories in the roman empire uh, which affected especially which is very very special uh, regarding the early empire okay Uh, first is the emperors various emperors who uh, made the roman empire extremely powerful who added the glory who added the further expansion further uh, territories who uh, made uh, the roman empire to be united and to settle to be settled one okay there had been the extremely famous and uh, very uh, far sighted rulers like nero julius caesar octavian augustus tiberius trajan etc second feature of the early roman empire was administration in that administration we especially discuss the the three most important feature number one is the emperor second one is the senate and third one is the army okay children here in this chart the senate and aristocracy has been uh, defined in the another way but we i'll say that senate used to involve most of the higher aristocrats only okay so if i say the major roman administration if you want to put in if you want to describe uh, the major pillars of the roman empire you would consider the three number one is the emperor second one is the senate and the third one is army these had been the major three pillars of the roman administration okay uh, king had been considered extremely powerful uh, the senate used to include almost all the high nobles high uh, uh, land owning classes representatives that was senate that had significant control over the ruler uh, and the army which had been a very uh, settled well organized uh, well equipped largest standing army of the empires of that time army was also considered as the right hand of the king the kings who had been in very good relation with the army they ruled very successfully because you know when you are dealing with a large empire you are supposed to face many of the revolts you are supposed to face many of the challenges internally so if army is supporting you you would be able to crush the revolts you would be able to manage the internal uh, conspiracy and all so uh, army had been always supported by the king that always made senate very suspicious of army secondly army was very well organized in the roman times uh, there had been the proper recruitments they had the pension system they had the uh, proper uh, payments uh, monthly they had proper training arrangements and all they had been professional in war and all so army were very powerful and very uh, ar the army of uh, roman times had been considered extremely powerful and was uh, supportive towards king now when we discuss the administration we do discuss the republic children 
in present way republic simply refers to a nation which is having its own constitution okay but when i say roman republic it refers when public representatives are having a say towards king so in form of senate they were maintaining their republic they were maintaining uh, the rules and regulations they were ma- maintaining the democratic spirit provincial territory refers that roman empire the last roman empire had divided itself in had divided itself in uh, smaller units smaller states so that they could uh, govern themselves very well and each state had been uh, regulated had been ruled by one representative okay so uh, that had been taxation was a very proper way through which the ruler was able to collect the revenue system proper way taxation had been de- devised and designed a uh, very uh, proper way so that people are not overburdened and uh, uh, king uh, and the state owns uh, rightly for running the public welfare facilities it was maintained through uh, the roman direct rule system in which the whole of the roman empire had been divided in uh, various sub units each of the unit had been up, uh, had been uh, supervised by one of the representative of king clear so uh, this was all about uh, the administration now uh, when we move to the third century crisis children i'll say it was the event uh, in which there had been some disturbances started arising and showing that uh, roman rule is going to be weak actually uh, from first to third century the roman emperors maintained their rule and control very well but around the 3rd century problems started arising okay a revolts started taking place in the distant territories secondly there had been a emergence of a conjugative weak rulers who were not able to manage such a vast empire so uh, that resulted in uh the attacks from the uh, neighboring enemies of the sasanians especially from present day iran uh, likewise the germanic tribes of goths and all they also started attacking on the eastern borders so this particular event in which the roman empire had been facing the uh, extreme troubles that was considered as the third century crisis children the another feature another main feature main political feature is late antiquity that directly refers to the emperors and uh, 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 emperors of those times which had been ruling after uh, the 3rd century means 4th to 7th century's time would be considered as the late antiquity okay its main feature is the various emperors uh, who somehow strengthened the economy and gave a new direction to the roman rule okay especially uh, constantine uh, constantine's achievements uh, you know constantine uh, Constant, constantine's rule had a extremely uh, good type of uh, achievements like over expansion of the empire uh, his shifting of capital city to the constantine pole uh, and the most remarkable age uh, adoption of christianity before that they had uh, their early faiths they had they had their uh, local natural worship faiths okay christianity had been adopted by the roman ruler uh, constantine only in the 4th century uh, and you know after his adoption to the christianity uh, the christianity spread extremely fast all over the europe present time in the present day you would find europe as totally uh, uh, christian continent maximum of the people of the europe follow the christianity so that had started in the 4th century only okay next stage uh, we'll study about the next ruler that is uh, diocletian 
his achievement was about the uh, abandoning of the territory of the uh, which were of little economic importance these particular territories were left okay uh, because uh, it was very difficult in those times to deal with such distant lands secondly uh, there had been another ruler his name was justinian his achievements were especially in the monetary sphere means in economics he introduced the uh, he introduced a new way uh, to strengthen economy uh, especially the introduction of uh, glass and its business introduction of solidus uh, and uh, his efforts especially brought the urban prosperity so all these had been the major features uh he also introduced the justinian code uh and led to the further expansion of the empire okay so finally uh children we end up to uh, this particular uh thing we'll end over here in next video we'll be covering the next portion thank you